All right, we are into champ select. Sadly, we don't have our other commentator right now. And once again, immediately banning Lee Sin from her Karana just to stop uh, him from going crazy like they did. Um, surprised they're banning Orin first again um, and not Malphite or Sejuani, just trying to stop that. Um, although, uh, Minty Fresh banning Udyr does not actually make any sense to me because his Udyr was not strong at all. It did not really do anything. It kind of started, well, it started strong and then fizzled out. The Jax ban makes way more sense from them, which they end up doing now. So obviously they're just trying to stop her Kirana from playing pretty much anything. Um, and then obviously ELG panning away the Sejuani because of, the, um, and the Malphite just because how much of a threat they were in game one. And trying to stop them from getting that huge front line um, in their face again. Um, yeah, and picking up Maokai, which is probably why they ended up banning Udyr. Instead of banning away the Maokai, just to make sure that there was no... Um, nothing from MLG. But this time, leaving up Cho, which they I don't think they've ever done for Green Lantern. Because, yeah, so they end up picking up Cho'Gath. Now, that could still be a mid lane Cho'Gath, which they did end up doing in their games yesterday. Um, but doing it top lane also makes sense, and really, either one can work out very well, considering who, um, who is playing. Those three target bans against her, Karana, that's interesting. Yeah, I was not... I'm so excited. I was not expecting the <laughs> Udyr one, but it works. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're Ooh, We saw Green Lantern do well on Cho'Gath yesterday, so... That's yep. going to be good. As we have the Jarvan coming in as a jungler, so very mobile, getting around everywhere, and picking up Fizz for Veil. So very close range team, really wanting to get in their faces so far right now. Yeah. Also, I just want to say I love their jungler summoner name, Crippling Sadness. Uh, <laughs> same. Same, dude. I just <laughs> realized that was his actual name, because I don't... <laughs> I don't. I play with uh, names off normally, so like I just stopped reading them. Interesting. Anyway, let's see what the other ban is, since this will probably Leona make sense, considering that's all Dark Ice has played, and they know he can do it. He can do it very well. Yes, they finally pick up a Morgana for Buffaloes. Morgana yeah. is definitely a comfort pick for Buffaloes, and I'm. I'm kind of excited to see her play it. Yes. Also, another target ban. So they are legitimately just trying to five ban out her Karana. And finally <laughs> getting rid of not, the MF. They do not want her Karana <laughs> to be on anything he's comfortable with this game. I mean, he looked very comfortable on the Jax, which was something I did not actually really expect. But let's it's see, for, let's see for what other it looks like Shivana. Yeah. Ooh, Shivana. Yeah, her Karana seems to play a lot of, like, assassin or very bursty single target damage junglers. So, uh... And now they're the pretty much all gone. <laughs> Against her Karana. And they also Sejuani gone <laughs> and Jarvan. So, there's seven junglers gone right now. <laughs> play whatever you want, just not these seven champions. <laughs> As we have Tristana, and who will be their support now that they finally don't have Leona? I'm interested. I want to say Brum. But Nami. Okay. Okay, the Tristana E with the Nami E, that, that has the potential to do a lot. Nami is really, really strong right now, as well. Yes. Um... But Lulu's end up going not with... a bad pick either. Um, but if Morgana is the support, um, which most likely is. I mean, um, they have Oriana, so yes. I mean, I've seen Morgana top. Um, going with Warwick, <laughs> which every game I've seen a Warwick in in the past two days, the Warwick has won. He's just been everywhere threatening everyone eating everyone and it fits with the play style of Yi and yes. Jax of single target. This is this is her Karana saying you can target ban me with all five bans, but I'll still find another bursty single target damage jungler to throw in your face. So I like that I like that perseverance from her Karana. 
<laughs> also, um, we're finally getting an exhaust for like the first time this series by the looks of it with Lulu. Exhaust is always something nice to see. Instead of all the Ignite. Um, yes. Now, Ignite on Morgana does make sense. But... Uh, we don't actually update their uh, summoner spells until the choose your loadout time stops. I think. Oh, really? Yeah. It's to stop, like, say, a captain on one team from seeing the summoner sports, um, summoner spells on the other side until it's done. Uh, okay, but it, it does look like Ignite for Morgana. Yes. So. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, my screen has the little, like, cutoff thing, so I really can't tell. Uh, there's, like, two millimeters uh, of Ignite. Yeah. it It's cut off for me, but I've gotten really good at seeing what it is figuring out what they are so like Cho'Gath has teleport flash i mean they're color coded then, yeah oriana has flash heal yeah morgana has flash ignite i don't know why it does that and i don't know why riot hasn't fixed it yet or if they even plan to i mean they probably plan to considering this patch they finally fixed the um, unsealed spell book doesn't change summoner spells on spectator ah yeah that's true <laughs> I played uh, a like, game yesterday where yeah. all five of us took unsealed spellbook. <laughs> oh, I mean, I want to do an unsealed spellbook jungler, um, just so I can get rid of Smite when like Baron or Dragon isn't spawning. But yeah, I don't want to the actually cool down try on it, it. Is a little is awkward. Yeah, I mean, you can just collect enough points early game when you actually need ignite that you can pretty much swap about whenever you need. Unless you meant, like, the cooldown of, like, the summoner spell that you're picking up, but, yeah. Although, neither team really seems to be good at team fighting in this game. I would say ELG has the slightly better team fight comp, just because Warwick can ult in as Orianna puts um, the ball <clears throat> as Morgana shields him. Yeah, the ball delivery system. Yeah, and then Morgana ult can kind of lock down people if she can get a good stun. Yeah. And Bob is really good at, you know, she'll flash in and ult, you know, three or four people in the middle of a team fight, even if it means she dies, if she can get the ulti off. Um, she's very comfortable with that Morgana pick, so. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think ELG has the better team fighting comp, but uh, you know, I'm interested to see which version of these two teams we're going to get this game. Um, yeah. Uh, early game, I want to say top lane will win for um, Minty Fresh. Um, <laughs> jungler should go over to ELG. Uh, mid lane, I want to say that uh, Minty Fresh should win it. Um Bot lane. I apologize for my dog. <laughs> it happens. It happens. I uh, told my son to go get in the shower. And she freaked out when the shower turned on. <laughs> <laughs> the best of ELG. Let's hope so, Oni. I mean, but these you... are, you know, the top, the top two, or you know, within the top three teams. I think. Uh, I think Minty Fresh is in second or third place. I think Minty Fresh is tied with just Wolves right now, and uh, ELG is in first. I do not know. 4.5 comfort picks. You mean four out of five? Well, I can tell you right now because I have the standings open because I was just updating them. Um, ELG is tied with just Wolves for first, and then Minty Fresh is in third. Hmm. So, yeah, I, yeah, it's going to be interesting to say the least, uh, to say the least, 4.5. So one, one person is half of a comfort pick. <laughs> more like it's probably their second or third pick. Um, cause uh, everyone... okay. I mean, they target banned her Karana pretty hard. So that's probably the 0. 0.5. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
ELG would have the tiebreaker against Just Wolves because ELG is currently 2-0 against Just Wolves. So. All right, and we're immediately starting off with an invade on the bottom side, trying to catch out the Lulu or the Tristana. We're going to see if they're gonna, just going to throw a Q in. They're not just going to throw a Q into the bush. They should see the wards. They know that they were there. Um, I feel like H2 Buffalo should have just thrown a Q in just to mess around. Because if it hit, yeah. it would have worked a lot. <clears throat> And it, it um, Oni, it does reflect that on the standings. ELG is in first and just Wolves is in the second place spot. So. Mm, we have some deep wards. They saw the all five of ELG on the bot side. So uh, Maokai and Fizz putting a couple deep wards down in. Uh, or yeah, yeah into the uh, red side jungle there. Yeah, which will very much help on the first clear, getting the exact timing of when Warwick swaps sides. Unless Warwick decides to do three camps on the bot side and then gank spot, which would be very yeah. funny to see. But then again, if I you have don't, seen Warwick's you, do that, so. Yeah, but if you don't see the Warwick on one of the wards, you should know that he's on the bottom side still. So they should still know where he is no matter what. Yeah, let me see the uh, timing on these wards. Uh, the wards are just about to expire. They didn't, I don't think they allowed enough time for those wards to sit there before they got any information out of them. No, but standard, standard jungle clear is, you know, if you start blue side, you do blue and then gromp or wolves and then go red. So they didn't allow enough time. Yeah, they slightly messed up on the deep wards. Not too much of an issue, but yeah, still not the best thing to do. Um, they did, it does let them know that they definitely started blue side no matter what. Yeah. <clears throat> Wait, is Maokai going Aftershock on this one? Instead of Grasp? It looks like it. Oh. Because, yeah, um, Aftershock will get you more yeah. damage, but you're t you won't be nearly as tanky. So it's generally not yeah. the best idea. Yeah, Cho'Gath has Grasp, whereas Maokai has Aftershock. So definitely going to be uh, tough in the early game for that Maokai. As we have the Hurricanrana threatening topside again. They know that Crippling Sadness is there. So we're going to see if they're going to try and start a fight here. Oh, it looks like Dark Eye steps a little too far forward there. Gets caught by Mor Morgana Q. Yep, and ends Dark up taking Ice... a bit. Nor he normally plays those tanky supports where he can step up like that, but you can't do that with uh, Lulu. Yeah, no, not at all. As in the mid lane, the Orianna slowly poking out the Fizz just with the ranged advantage. Ah. Bot lane pulls out the flash from Vayne as uh, Lulu steps forward, cues the Vayne, and Tristana W's in and lands her E. As we have Vayne, Warwick almost diving a tier 2 turret to try and kill... <laughs> I see this. But now Her he has Karana to deal with getting, more getting... things showing up. Oh, interesting. Okay. Her Karana going to pick up the first blood here oh. against uh, Vale. Yeah, so barely able to uh, get saved with the Orianna E, but and also picking up the Maokai, just going showing a good roam by ELG. Just everyone immediately coming down as soon as Warwick was in a little too deep. Um, so that's a kill on Cho'Gath and a kill on Warwick and two assists for Orianna. So that's not jump change. No, it is very good for them. Um, also, I think Orianna had pushed in the wave before Fizz left. So she is now up in CS with the wave pushing against her. Mm -hmm. um, she shouldn't actually be backing right now, though, because if she backs now, that wave will be gone by the time she gets back. That was Absolutely. not a good idea by her. She should have cleared the wave and then backed. So she came backed with more gold. And yeah, because that huge wave is now just going to hurt her turret as Fizz can leave. Granted, there's nowhere for him to leave too right now. Much better poke coming out of... Um... Minty Brush? Uh, uh, the... Minty Brush. Yeah, their bot lane. I had a brain fart. Yeah, all good. Yeah, the Lulu able to poke <laughs> a lot more than the Leona. Um, 
right? Dark Ice liked playing very aggressive. Um, although if she does it too much and H2 Buffaloes gets a good Q, she will die. Yes, H2, Buff H2 Buffaloes is very low on mana here, and Vayne is, you know, has the Relic Shield, so not enough damage to really respond to the Tristana Lulu. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Morgana would have issues with this, because she's just going to constantly be trying to Black Shield the Lulu Poke, but the Lulu Poke is just mm -hmm. so much cheaper to use. Absolutely. I think it costs... Uh, 85 mana for Black Shield versus, yes. uh, I believe it's 40 or 50 for Lulu Q. Yeah, it it's just not worth it at all um, for mana-wise until later game. <clears throat> if In this bot lane, while you do have the poke with Morgana, I think with the Vayne ADC, you want to be passive and just farm under tower, you know, that way you know that you're safe from ganks, unless the Warwick gets so fed they just dive, which isn't happening this game. But, you know, gives a little more insurance. Yep. So um, now we have Green Lantern end up pushing up pretty far and ends up dying for it. Um, just because Milk Cows ends up on the opposite side of him um, by queuing him yes. towards his own turret. So yes. just... And there's... The there was no vision in that top lane. Uh, Green Lantern had the the control ward and try brush, but he has two wards in his pocket. Yep. So yeah, definitely were... pushed too far up. And now Tristana is just going to try and take down this first turret already, just constantly just using the bombs against um, a van. You'll just end up pushing in <laughs> so much farther. Honestly, I actually want to see Tristana and Lulu go mid right now and just take down mm -hmm. mid, mid turret if they can. Just because there's no reason for them to go top, really. Um, and Tristana can do a lot of damage to a turret. So if um, Fizz goes bot, who should generally be pretty safe, since uh, anyone who plays Fizz should be used to playing against ranged things. Um, yeah. And, and Warwick going to sit in this brush waiting for Oriana to push the wave in so that they can dive this level, you know, yeah. this she's just going to Fizz who's super low. Yep, and there he goes down. Just staying way too long. Um Yeah, needed to back off cuz as soon as um Oriana <laughs> who's at full HP is walking under turret, you know something's up. As we have J4 engaging oh. upon Warwick and a two-man ult getting both the top laner and the jungler getting caught out in the middle of everything. As even Tristana is now here taking out the Orianna. The heal came out of Orianna too, so she tried. But uh, much better poke and siege coming out of um, yep. Minty Fresh. God, yes. I'm so terrible at the team names today. So right there, Cri <laughs> um, Crippling Sadness and Milk Cows were engaging on and it worked at the very um uh, they were threatening it but then as soon as they got um trapped between everyone um that should have been an issue for them and crippling sadness does die for it but because call me fatty was there and sky lancer wasn't it ends up working out for them um just because they end up just outnumbering them and then oriana yes. ends up being the mm -hmm. one trapped um between everyone just like crippling sadness was right before then yes <clears throat> now Vayne is down about 20 CS on the Tristana and I think the the right choice for Skylancer here is to try to free farm some kind of lane yeah but there's no real way uh the only one that he could do would be top lane um and even that isn't really too safe um I cause... mean against that Fizz in bot lane uh he will die if Fizz has alt yeah um, without Morgana there true the Fizz um, does have ult, so... Yeah, which is why I suggested that Fizz does go bot lane as Tristana and um, Lulu go in the mid lane, just because it gives them winning matchups all across the... Um, yeah. Rift. And more more siege potential for Minty Fresh as well. Yep. So yeah, they it does end up going exactly as I um, wanted it to, with Tristana in the mid lane going against the Orianna. Mm -hmm. Um and we'll see how this top lane fight goes, but nothing really happens because they just slowly walk out. Milk Cows did pick up a Spectre's Cowl against the, the Chogaf, so I think that was good a good choice. 
um, since he has Aftershock instead of Grasp, having a little bit of MR against the Cho'Gath can help him sustain a little bit more. Yep, as we have um, H2 Buffaloes and Huracana going very deep in for Crippling Sadness. Um, so much so that they just keep flashing and just keep chasing. Uh, we'll see if Crippling Sadness can get out with the help of the Fizz that's about to arrive, but I think he'll just be a little too slow. As Orianna ends up getting a single ult on the Maokai, who was for some reason trying to 4v1 because everyone left to help Crippling Sadness. I um, feel like there was a miscommunication there because only Vale needed to actually go help him, but instead everyone ended up doing, leaving mm. Milk Cows alone against everyone. Ugh. So now, um, since uh, it was ended up being a two for one for ELG, uh, taking out Milk mm -hmm. Cows and Crippling Sadness, is only Hurakurana has to die, had to die. But still with the map pressure from um, Minty Fresh, just because Vayne has to go down bot side just to farm, just to try and get gold to get slightly more in the game. Granted, yes. there is a bigger difference in the mid lane than there is in the bot lane for CS. So ELG is actually ahead in CS, even if the Vayne is behind. Yes. And now that Vayne was able to free farm that bot lane, she picks up a zeal here, which yeah. is going to help a little bit. Yeah, she needs the wave clear pretty fast, so rushing, um, going BF sword zeal, um, probably into static shift right away is probably the best bet. Probably, yes. Just because I think it, standard it, build for ADCs is BF into zeal item. It changes every once in a while. If people are going with Relic Shield, sometimes it's better pretty much just to rush Bloodthirster like it was in, like, Season 4. Um, yeah, yeah, just that's because true. That means you get a huge amount of uh, shield shielding and you're just... Especially if, you take, especially if you take that Relic Shield on Vayne and then you take Overheal. Yeah. It can... It can uh... Well, if you don't take Overheal, Relic Shield isn't the best idea. Um, it's helpful, yeah. but... Yeah. Uh, now, Dark Seal on the Fizz is an interesting... Did he start with a Dark Seal? No, I because don't he think has so. a Doran's Ring. So that, that's an interesting choice out of that Fizz. He's one and two. Also, Maokai... only one assist. Maokai sold his starting item for to finish Spirit to Visage finish earlier. To finish Spirit Massage, yeah. Also, um, Crippling Sadness not cancelling the ult fast enough to continue chase on Green Lantern, giving him enough time to get away. So it seems like he's not overly too used to Jarvan. Because you should know that you can cancel it. They had an... It was after the cancel time. As we have Fizz getting an ult on Vayne, making her burn her flash. And we'll see if he can oh, kill Skyline. Minion so. block here. Gonna run to her Karana. Yep, we'll see who gets... Otto's get, minions. Who can get... Can he kill before he dies? Why is getting ulted? And he will... Oh. Not succeed. So Skylance are barely wow. able to live with the help of her Karana. Autoed a minion before autoing Fizz to get some health back. Yeah, just almost death in Super unfortunate for Vale. Yes, like he definitely should have had that. Um, but it happens. He as they almost dive in crippling sadness. But not having the damage to really follow up and kill him underneath the tower. Yeah, and uh, her Karana taking um, three tower shots, it looks like. Yes. Forces them to back off of that a little bit. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, we have a, an Abyssal Mask finished for Cho'Gath. Abyssal? Eh, okay. I can see it. I can see it. I just don't think it's overly the best idea. It will help with the Orianna ults and the Morgana pools, though. Just because Cho'Gath mm -hmm. should be the one walking into the middle of those areas. That's if he can actually yes. get there, though. Since they will be trying yes. to stop him from just wandering into team fights and just standing there. As they try and poke them out so they can take that middle turret. 
because right now getting that middle turret will help them a lot. Um, but almost, it feels like they should almost just give up on it for a little while and just try and take top turret, because as soon as they force Cho out, there's no one near mm. near close to it. Um, so they could, yes. they should have just roamed up top, taken, uh, tried to knock away Cho, and then take the turret. Granted, because they have two pink yes. orbs there, um, Cho would have backed off, So, but still, just getting him to back off and getting damage on the top turret would have been great for them. No, they have they had a control ward on the dragon. They see Warwick trying to take it. Um, I do agree that they should, you know, kind of back off of this this mid lane a little bit. And you know, Warwick is so strong against these objectives, the neutral objectives. That you know, if they can't do anything mid, then rotate and see what other objectives they can obtain. Yeah. In this game. Granted, uh, Oriana does back and making trying to Fizz end up wasting the fish trying to stop her. But they end up do getting the turret for it, and um, Hurricanrana yes. was not able to kill the dragon fast enough, so now it's going to be him trying to steal it, probably. Or not. He just lets They just end up letting it happen, since he would have to 1v4 to even have an attempt at stealing it. Yeah, that Oriana backing was just super bad timing for Ruckfank and for ELG. Yeah, it feels like he should have just stayed around just to try and clear wave just to make them waste time in mid lane still so um Hurricanrana could get the dragon right they gave up a lot of pressure by having oriana back when she did yep very much so also at this point i would say maokai should start building righteous glory just so he can get into fights more consistently but they do make cho waste mm -hmm. his tp they weren't even trying to get that turret weren't even threatening it and cho ends up tping down for them which is a very think, odd uh, choice yeah i think they should have kept chogath top to maintain the pressure in the top lane since they knew maokai was mid but yeah <clears throat> having cho tp mid lane allows maokai to rotate to the top lane and respond to the minions pushing in before they even hit the tower also and maokai Tris still has tp to come in Triss doing a very weird play ends up making her burn her flash before this fight even starts. Um, as we have um, Maokai and Jarvan going deep in just trying to disrupt everyone. And now we have um, Warwick getting pushed back by Tristana, giving him more time to do damage to everyone. As Jarvan goes back in, CCing like three people. Um, Warwick missing his ult, getting CC'd under tower as Trist able to kill Vayne and will likely be jumping onto Warwick to finish it up. Because the reset should have given her jump back, but Tristana ends up just walking forward and just deciding to shoot instead of jumping in. And there was that flash <laughs> ulti stopwatch from uh, the Morgana. And during which that entire, I knew was going to happen eventually. <laughs> during that entire fight, Fizz was just bought, so it was that was yep. a four v five, and it went two for two. As Fizz now just trying to deal as much damage to this turret and get all the CS that he can. And now they're going to, um, Maokai should be roaming top with Tristana just because there's so many wards up there that they should just be able to hurt that tower a lot. But they seem to be pinging Rift Herald, so they might be going for that instead. It looks like that's what they're doing. Yeah. During that time, they should have put some wards, um, in the top side, um, jungle, mm -hmm. um, either in the bush that is to the northeast of Warwick or to the bush that, like, Cho'Gath's in right now. Um, just so that they could get vision of them when they respawned. Um, but Warwick ends up jumping in on accident and having to flash out instantly. Uh, just because he didn't expect, like, four people to be in there. Yes. I think it would have been better had, you know, like, say J4 and Maokai were on the Rift Herald. They have Triss and Lulu go top lane to take that tower. Kill two birds with one stone and keep the pressure in the lanes. Yep. And I think that with J4 and Maokai, they would have been able to zone the Warwick off of the Rift Herald long enough in order to secure it. Oh, most definitely. It Like, it ends up working out. There was just slight better ways to do it. Um, granted, because of Warwick's mistake, it ended up being the best thing that could have happened for them, because they also got Warwick's Flash for free. Yes, they got it basically for free. Yeah, they... Yeah. And now we have Fizz and Tristana hunting down the Oriana. We'll see. Uh, but he does not decide to throw the fish. Uh, and they find... Um, Minty fr 
Fresh finally clears out some of the pink wards that were in top river for so long by ELG. Because ELG, honestly, has had way more pink wards and way more wards out throughout the duration of this game. Very nice stopwatch timing on that Orianna against the Fizz ulti. Oh, yeah. but equally good timing on the troll pull from Fizz. And Orianna too low on mana to follow up. Yeah, but and no one's really around there to follow up. Her Karana is probably trying to run down there right now using his blood scent. Um, which means that um, the other team should be trying to engage um, in mid lane. Which they are. Which they do. With yes. uh, Jarvan flag and dragging, then ulting the vein and just keeping her trap there. Granted, Green Lantern is able just to nom on... Um, J4. Yeah, J4 just to insta-kill him when he wasn't prepared. Fizz does end up dying for his distraction, but now they're summoning Rift Herald in the mid lane with a Trist auto-attacking it. Um, they're going to have to pretty much just wave clear as much as they can or give this up, but instead they try and fight. They were trying to poke down the That's Maokai. That's sad shit on the Tristana ends up picking up the kill on the... Yeah. Uh, Morgana. They should have just pretty much activated uh, the pool and activated Static Shift once and then backed away. But they attacked the Maokai a little bit too much, and then he just says, you know what, I can just jump in. You can't stop me. And just pretty much messes up Skylancer and H2 Buffaloes. Mm-hmm. And now we have Tristana, who should end up getting the free turret top lane, unless uh, Cho'Gath decides to TP there. But I think it's still on cooldown for another, like, five seconds. As in the ball. There's ulti coming out of Fizz. But sadly missing Hurakurana, so he's able to get away, but they do end up trading top turret for bottom turret. Um, which is perfectly even. Uh, but now mid turret's going down just because... Um, Maokai cannot stop Vayne and Orianna, because if he engages on one of them, the other one will just CC him, and he'll just end up dying from the DPS of Vayne. And we have Vale stealing away um, Gromp from her Karana. Uh, but now he might just be stuck in a little too deep, just because there's not much he can do really to get away at this point. Just because now that um, Rock Frank is here... Um, and Milk Cows and Crippling Sadness showing up a little bit too late, but might be able to kill a Warwick. But he ends up healing enough damage that uh, Milk Cows ends up going down. And her Karana is staying alive just from Warwick's passive. And also ending up having to flash, Crippling Sadness having to flash away. And her Karana could have got the kill because Ruck Frank ended up speeding him up, but he does not end up chasing. And now my son is running through the house completely naked. Normal stuff. <laughs> normal, normal, normal stuff. <laughs> um, so right now, Call Me Fatties end up taking down mid turret as um, Green Lantern is taking Dragon. This is not worth it at all for them. They gave up an in mid in hip not. tower for not even going to be a Dragon. Drake. It's, they're not even going to oh. get it. They can't stay around there. You can flash Nom and that's it. But it's not even low enough for him Ooh, to eat right now. W. He has to do uh, 500. Oh, and he picks it up. Yep, he ends up taking it down. Just, But he had to do 500 damage before he could even eat it. So luckily he's tanky enough to do it. But that was not worth it at all. As we now have Hurakurana in a bad position. Um, granted, Lulu and Fizz end up getting Oriolted. But she does not have enough damage to actually kill anyone and just... Makes them low enough that they can't continue the fight. Absolutely. As during that time, Trist is now once again taking um, pot shots at mid objectives and trying to get the inhib. With now, ELG is struggling to maintain pressure in this game. Very much. And they so. just can't. I mean, granted, they're not too far down in gold. They're only down less than a K. But yeah, not. It's about. Well, it's about one K now because they picked up the uh, inhib. And they do have better wards with the, um, well, they do have better vision with all the wards, but they don't have nearly as much map control just because of the turret difference. Granted, if ELG yes. ends up starting getting more and more turrets, they will start to, um, they will get very much farther ahead because they just have more gold from other things that aren't turrets. Absolutely. And uh, I think ELG has the harder scaling team as well. Y yes. With the Vayne and... Uh... The Vayne and Cho'Gath. Yeah. Yeah, so 
you know, the longer this game goes on, the, the lower the chances are for Minty Fresh to win this game. So they may be ahead now, but, you know, this is really anybody's game at this point still. Yeah, it just depends um, because ELG does not have the best wave clear for the Super Minions. Um, Absolutely. As we have Murakurana <laughs> just taking out Veil um, in a bot lane fight, and now we have everyone gaining up on the Cho'Gath, who is a huge wall, and ends up they end up taking out Lulu with the Orianna ult, and the Cho'Gath sustained damage. Lulu should not have died there at all. No. But... So, in the end, I think ELG wins out on that trade because they picked up two kills versus the one kill on the Cho'Gath. Yes, very Rock much. Rock Fang's so. gonna steal the Scuttle Crab there with a Q. Oh, that... Uh. <laughs> yeah, ELG definitely won that trade just because they ended up getting the bot lane. They won the fight top lane just because Green Lantern is just so tanky that they don't have really any way to kill him. He just kind of stands there, lives forever. And Maokai does end up going for a Randuin's Omen, so now mm -hmm. crits won't do as much, and attack speed slows when hitting him, but the only one who that really affects at all is Vayne. Vayne and a yeah. little bit of Warwick, but Warwick shouldn't really be punching Maokai at all. But, oh well. Yeah, Warwick's, uh, Warwick's goal is not to focus the tanks is to get that fizz and that tristana yeah once again fizz trying to split push but oh. he should not be uh. right now because he cannot 1v1 everyone and he ends up flashing away and then walks back in oh warwick whips his ulti there yeah minty fresh gonna try to pressure this baron knowing that warwick is down bot which ends up working well for them because they immediately pop the oriana as Vayne ends up coming in from behind as we uh, and popping uh, Lulu. Now we have everyone turning on Vayne's the Vayne now that she's... caught out there. She ends yeah. up being super alone because she came in from behind when she was just like, no one will see me. It kills Lulu and then ends up dying for it. As we have Vale trying to mess around with her Karana, but he'll bo he should die for this. Um, he should, yes. Yeah, there it goes. Warwick speed and will he end up just messing around with them long enough? But yes. they end up he, getting... The to live and hold him off long enough for Minty Fresh to pick up that Baron. I mean, even if Hurricanrana backed, he wouldn't have been able to get to the Baron in time. Oh. I don't no. think. So it doesn't overly matter since his W was on cooldown since he activated it to chase down Vale at the very start of their fight. Um, mm -hmm. it, It's just, yeah. They end up taking the great play by immediately killing the Orianna and Skylancer not being with the team and not having any peel from the Cho'Gath or H2 Buffaloes. So he just ends up dying as soon as he kills Lulu. And Lulu for Vayne, not a good trade at all in a team fight. Another Zeal coming out of uh, Skylancer here. Chances are that one should be... Um... Rapid Fire. I want to say Rapid Fire Cannon. I mean, I want to say um, Phantom Dancer, but it might be Rapid Fire Cannon. And now they caught catching out her Karana, who was probably down there just to stop I mean... Fizz from split pushing. <laughs> but there's more than just Fizz down here now. Yeah. Rapid Fire isn't a bad idea on the vein here because Skyline's just having so much trouble even getting into these fights and doing anything that... uh. I don't, I don't think Rapid Fire would be a terrible idea, but Phantom Dancer definitely the more standard item. Yep. I mean, I just don't like Rapid Fire Cannon on Vayne because it doesn't improve her range that much since she doesn't have much to start with. And one shot ain't going to do anything True. for Vayne. Phantom Dancer will help her keep her True. alive True. Uh, when either Fizz or Jarvan jump on her. And they are immediately, now that they have two inhibs, are immediately rotating top just to try and get the third inhib. Or they are, they're actually death pushing. But they need one person to go topside just to, um... Yeah, that mid inhib is nope. back up. I no don't one... think that... Why... I don't think they have enough pressure no, no one's to, gonna... uh... <laughs> to, to death bush. They, they need someone up top so that um, Minty Fresh has a reason to go top. They just stood there, and there was no reason for anyone in ELG, I mean, to go top. So they just never did. If they had sent one person exactly. top, or two, then they would have had a reason to go top, and they would have started sending people up there, and then the fun bush would have worked. But there was no reason for ELG to even look at top lane. 
So the fun push ends up just being nothing, and they just end up waiting for the inhib. Sure, they get it, so it did actually end up working for them, but, like, they just ended up doing nothing for a little while. And Jarvan immediately going in and getting stunned by Vayne as the entire backline and Fizz gets ulted by the Orianna. But at this point, Tristan Tristana just can kill pretty much everyone she points at, so she has already taken Orianna and Vayne. Now H2 Buffalo is going down to Fizz following her, as Tristana's just slowly poking down um, Cho'Gath and Warwick. As the Mal um, Maokai just does not die at all. He'll just end up tanking through everything as Tristana ends up being able to just jump away, hop around, yeah. and constantly be doing damage. We have a mortal reminder coming out of Tristana, so uh, definitely allowed a lot more damage to go out yes. against that Warwick and Cho'Gath. Yeah. yeah. And Minty Fresh going to pick up game three here. That was exciting. Alrighty. Well, Minty Fresh gonna...